Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. All through yesterday and after yesterday's video was posted discussing The Last of Us 2 and the Sony DMCA abuse, I received a few comments, emails and the like stating that I had forgotten to discuss what was claimed to be review manipulation on the part of Sony and Naughty Dog. The short answer is no, I didn't. The long answer is this entire video where that is precisely what I'll be discussing. However, thanks to YouTube's deranking and horrific ad revenue rates, which are still plainly evident in how yesterday's video is performed, I decided to take on a sponsor for a couple of videos, so let's run through that real quick. Yes, that's right, I went and got a sponsor, because YouTube ad revenue is beyond garbage right now. Of course, I don't want to promote any sort of mobile game or any of that nonsense, so I chose to go with Raid, <clears throat> I mean, Bridge Wallet. These guys sent me my own Ridge wallet, which I chose the Carbon Fiber wallet because I'm a big fan of uniform branding, and I like it far more than I originally thought I would. The Ridge wallet is small, yet effective, with a sleek design that holds up to 12 cards plus room for your cash that can also easily fit in your front pocket. There are over 30 colors to choose from, plus they also sell phone cases, bags, and even a knife. And the Ridge team are so confident that you'll like these wallets, they're willing to allow you to test drive them for 45 days, which, if you don't love the wallet, it, simply send it back for a full refund. So get your Ridge wallet today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash SIDALPHA and use the code SIDALPHA for 10% off your order. Link is in the description below. Yesterday and today, people have been reporting on some anomalous information surrounding The Last of Us 2 in regards to review scores. Technically, as the game isn't even out yet, there realistically should not be any reviews whatsoever from any sources excepting perhaps media outlets or content creators that might have received pre-release copies of the game, which to my knowledge has not occurred. And we see on the PlayStation Store that The Last of Us Part 2 has a perfect 5-star score with 723 ratings at the time I recorded this video. Again, on the PlayStation Store for The Last of Us Part 2 Digital Deluxe Edition, we see that the page has a perfect 5-star score with 882 ratings. As a result of this, a great many people have been claiming that this is clear and deliberate review manipulation on the part of either Naughty Dog, Sony Entertainment, or both. And to be honest, that is entirely possible. However, bear in mind that this is a known issue and has been for nearly four years. In November of 2016, Steven Totillo released an article titled, Pre-Order Loopholes Allows Bogus User Ratings and Reviews to Proliferate on Xbox One and PS4 Stores. And in this article, they outline how this exact thing happens. Essentially, what the Xbox Store and the PlayStation Store allow you to do is they allow you to leave a review score even if no playtime at all is logged. Simply owning the game is enough for a user to leave a rating on the product. And within that article, Steven Totillo showcased how this could be done with pre-order copies only on as-yet-unreleased titles on both the Xbox Store and the PlayStation Store as well. In addition, the original The Last of Us game was widely regarded as being an exceptional game by PlayStation gamers. Currently on the PlayStation Store for the PS3, it shows a 5-star rating with over 18,000 reviews. By comparison, The Last of Us Remastered Edition for the PS4 shows a 5-star rating with over 200,000 reviews. Now, it must be said that even in light of the information contained within the leaks, even with the blatant DMCA abuse on the part of Sony, even with all of the controversy surrounding this title, there are going to be truly a massive number of The Last of Us fans out there that frankly don't give a damn about any of it. These are the fans that will ignore anything and everything regarding the controversies, about the damage to critics, to news outlets, and to content creators, and will only care about getting the new game. These are also the fans that will make up the majority of the gamers that are likely to pre-order the game, and these fans are the most likely to be genuinely excited for the game. And as that is the case, I would like to posit a very real possibility here. As these are the quote-unquote die-hard fans, it is extremely likely that these fans, in their undeniable excitement, have taken it upon themselves to express that excitement in terms of posting a 5-star rating on a game that has not been released, let alone played yet. For example, let's look at some other upcoming titles on the PlayStation Store. Ghost of Tsushima, available July 16th, 5 stars, 136 ratings. Cyberpunk 2077, available on September 16th, 5 stars, 
1,092 ratings. Wasteland 3, available on December 10th. 5 stars, 10 ratings. Now, yes, I do think it's possible, even likely, that some of these games publishers are goosing the ratings with their own pre-order purchases. This aids in their advertising and helps to secure pre-orders. It would make a certain amount of sense for them to do so, regardless of the fact that it is extremely unethical behavior. However, with as popular a title as this is, I find it infinitely more likely that this is little more than fans excited for a game attempting to show their support by rating the game before they have even played it. Of course, this requires me saying in no uncertain terms that this is one of the reasons that you cannot trust blind rating scores such as these. Player critique and professional critique will be of far greater utility than any simple rating system such as this, and no one should trust this sort of rating system that is not only made in a completely sterilized vacuum that ignores any and all context as to the reason for the ratings, but one that allows for people to be able to rate the game when they haven't even had a chance to play it. So, no, I did not forget to include this within my Dirty Devs video. I specifically chose not to because while it is likely that Sony and Naughty Dog could be up to something with these scores, it is also extremely likely, and to my mind infinitely more likely, that this is nothing more than fans expressing their excitement over an IP that they love. Now, those fans are not doing any service to their fellow gamers by doing this, but I personally am not about to call out Sony and Naughty Dog for something that, in all likelihood, they are not actually doing. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.